Mm. Let me know if you can see my screen. Let me just share my screen. Yes. Great. OK, so I think uh, so last class we had all our uh, setup, etc. So we have seen Cloud Foundry. How do we enable and you know uh, Cloud Foundry enabling as well as you know accessing the API endpoint directly from BAS. So that is very much important step because uh, it enables us to connect to the cloud platform and as well as to the on-premise system at one place. So BAS is uh, is uh, so simplified that it allows us to either build cloud applications as well as uh, on-premise specific applications as well. So it is uh, the main purpose of BAS was meant to meet both the worlds where uh, today for S4 HANA products, if you're trying to build or for cloud based products, which are SAP's own products or any other full stack applications. So that platform truly supports. So WebID was also supporting it, but uh, it's not scalable because WebID was in-house project where uh, if any new program, I suppose Python has to be introduced on top of it. Uh, it requires additional uh, building of the whole ecosystem from scratch. So for that reason, um, SAP has tied up with Microsoft and uh, they were using Visual Studio Code as a ID. So they need not to work on ID features. Rather, they can focus on releasing new extensions and plugins, etc., which facilitate developers uh, to quickly you know, extend their application. So that was a point. So Cloud Foundry enables to achieve that scale and fastness in you know, introducing new things. So today uh, our session will talk about uh, the whole fuel design system. So how do we build uh, enterprise apps that are equally you know, compelling and users will be you know, delightful to use the whole applications as well. So SAP Fury, when I, we are saying it, so what is SAP is following all the best practices? So if for the custom applications, when for a customer, if we try to implement those practices, uh, that is what is the design system is all about. So quick understand these all are known things. So in Fury 3 also there is nothing new um, with respect to design system at least. There are like few changes, but we'll try, just try to understand those. So this is what uh, Fury 3 uh, would generally be. So we have a new one called uh, new themes where Fury 3 themes are light and dark version. And along with that, we have not only just uh, tiles, but we'll have something called new concept called UI integration cards, which are uh, exclusively uh, using annotations. Uh, we can generate these uh, cards. This is not OVP. These are additionally new uh, concept called UI integration card, which we can be added on top of our uh, landing page. So apart from the tiles, but this uh, whole uh, idea can undergo change as on date uh, based on SAP's uh, initial, you know, uh, roadmap as such. So this is how it's tended, uh, generally expected to come out, but the integration etc cards are currently in place. So this is a new thing which is getting added to the Fury design system. Okay, and like we discussed earlier as well. So now not only as for HANA based apps, but all the other apps be it to conquer or analytical cloud for everything they used to have their own uh, entry point. So separate website, separate portal. And uh, if customer has two products of field glass as well as S4 HANA, then they had to log into two different entry places. So there is no single entry point for the customer. So now with Fury 3 that is going to be changing where you could see here on the right side there would be a thumbnail where they could easily access any of the products. So they enable seamless integration of all products, all SAP products. If customer is opting multiple SAP products, they would have unified UI and uh, SAP Fury can be leveraged to build any of the solutions which uh, includes both the products. So that's the design idea behind Fury 3. So this is a simple idea Again, this is a lab preview and uh, all of a sudden <laughs> SAP can have different ideas all together and it can come with something more interesting as well. But as on date, this is how the planned uh, roadmap is all. Uh, that's the reason it, it puts a note on below that SAP can change anytime without notice. So this is their idea. See at the strong core, their idea is all SAP products have common uh, platform where end user can build new solutions as well as custom solutions and that theory can be a choice. OK, so the first choice is definitely Fury is what we can at least uh, uh, conclude. 
Okay, this is what in Fury uh, 2.0 based apps where some KPIs, so some small uh, KPIs we can see and some dynamic uh, count we can see. So uh, again, what purpose does it solve? Is these all are role based? So specific role we can assign the apps. So if we are having 100 apps, we are building it. We can control them based on role. So based on the logged in user, automatically the number of apps that get displayed can be controlled. So that is what uh, user centric is all about. And the visual look would be same for not only a single app for all the apps on the uh, on the launchpad if you're accessing. So be it custom app or standard app, it's good practice to give unified uh, look and feel. So if customer is accessing suppose managed products application, he should have the same look and feel when he's accessing other SAP applications as well. So the whole point is using theme design and etc. We should actually do rebranding access as per the customer choice. And we should try to provide all the SAP platform products single uniform uh, visual design. So that is the object of uh, design system. And uh, we need to take a choice. So whether we need to have a responsive design. So the intended application are we building to desktop or to a mobile? So that has to be use case has to be decided before starting the application itself. So during requirement phase, we have to bound to ask uh, users whether this particular application they are specifically targeting to desktop or uh, they do require for the mobile because there is a set of libraries. So like M libraries, if we, we have to extensively use M library is subset of all the libraries which SAP UFA framework has and M library is the one which is responsible for providing this responsive behavior where uh, it's based on uh, uh, bootstrap framework. It's uh, all it's again an open source framework which enables automatic response. So based on the screen available screen space, it adapts automatically. So we are going to uh, use M controls. If at all we had to build for uh, mobile only specific, there are other controls like within the table control, the popular one. So similar to Excel, if you want the capabilities and uh, we have SAP.UI library dot grid table that is meant for desktop based applications where the number of data be it or number of columns uh, can exceed uh, more than eight greater than 200 rows of data if we have then it is a good practice as per sap uh, to follow grid table sap.ui.grid table so if your customer use case has more than thousand rows then using analytical table is a best practice because more the data you have to use some charts etc so that the end user can derive insights out of it so but it's a very simple eight columns and you have less than 200 rows of data then mobile also they can view the data but beyond 200 rows viewing the data in mobile is not a good uh, approach so we have to uh, take a feel and uh, when this talk about how better they can interact so based on that we try to make a choice between type of libraries etc we have to use in terms of uh, interactivity etc okay and one more aspect is uh, controls and floor plans so there has been some uh, some changes uh, between fury 2 and fury 3 so fury 2 we had something called uh, uh, smart controls of course that's just uh, was the beginning and as the fury 2 was evolving they coined the word called fury elements so and the templates also the we they call it as floor plans or templates yeah, generally, sir, just uh, this is how the analytical list page uh, looks like. And these are the current Fury 3 templates which are available. So <clears throat> templates serve two purpose. So they, the Fury elements, when they say they are meant for automating the whole UI development process. SAP's purpose was end user, if they come up with some new use case, they should be able to deliver developers should be able to deliver in lowest possible time with less effort. So if you are having a use case which has a drill down activity drill down activity when I mean you have a huge tabular data and user has to frequently search for a record then list report is the one which uh, is very flexible enough and using metadata alone and using CDS user alone can be generated instantly. So you need not to have any other uh, uh, criteria. If your only criteria is uh, looking up the data, drill down activity and searching for the records, etc. And uh, up to uh, we have a con theme called 113 approach. So when I say 113. Any use case in theory design system has to be built with 113 approach. 
theory design so as per theory three design system uh, this is a standard practice in theory so any use case if at all you have we have to follow 113 approach so what is this 113 approach so 113 approach uh, uh, you know uh, means one use case you got to have uh, you know um, one application and maximum you, you have to have three screens so beyond that you should not uh, have uh, beyond drill down activity etc if it are possible you have to split the use case into a different uh, application altogether so if you have a use case one use case uh, generally it's a recommended practice to have maximum of three screens because if you give beyond the, such a drill down activity user gets lost so it's not a best practice so we have something called cross app navigation using cross app navigation we'll try to connect similar use cases suppose we have a uh, products uh, uh, list report application and uh, we tend to have for each product um, there's a supplier associated with it so to man a supplier probably we could uh, build it as a separate use case altogether and uh, that can become a separate application so always we have to make the applications in theory to be very precise and uh, what are the tasks it is intended to do uh, to the task itself we are supposed to build the application so this is what a simple uh, thumb rule of it and all the templates if you see also they generally have a simple flow and similarly we have so list report itself has if you drill down a, in within it so we have something called object page layout where using tab structure detailed overview of you know modifying the objects uh, details etc can be done so object page is part of list report so on the row selection if you navigate inside uh, the layout which is being used is called as object page where you have a header section as well as a body which is organized with uh, some tab ta uh, tab forms so this they call it a sections as well so these are the two layouts which can be used uh, for most uh, generic scenarios and like I was saying, so we have something called overview page layout. So the, it is a part of Fury 2.0. It is not there is nothing new added as part of Fury 3, but overview page is not an independent uh, template. So overview page contains some charts, but this is not an independent template. So the list report is an independent template. So list report is independent template. Whereas uh, it's not uh, not independent template, so it's not. Why it's not? It's it it's just uh, you know uh, re de derives the charts etc are being derived from underlying application. If you have two theory applications, so we have built product list as well as uh, supply list. Of, for example, we have one app for uh, you know for managing product list. And other app for one more app for supplier information. So instead of going inside the application and trying to uh, look through the data, so try right now all we were trying to provide was just a number on the home screen, right? So if what if user wants to derive insights right even before entering it application? So in those cases, generally we use OVP, where OVP would be uh, our uh, landing page in case of uh, customer accessing it so from OVP. So overview page that's a short form of uh, overview page. So this overview page can have some six type of cards are there list card table card and uh, some bar etc six cards are there. So these six cards we can use and it comes with a filter bar. So filter bar allows to search the data as well as uh, look for the data without actually entering into the application. So both the products and supplier without entering into there, we can look at the information outright and based on the interaction with the cards, uh, we can actually redirect to the respective application. So you user need not to, uh, you know, figure it out uh, which app that particular information would be available. So they can straight away interact with the cards and it, it should take them to the respective application intended application. So it makes and users work a uh, little bit clean and uh, effortless. So that's the purpose of OVP. And uh, we do have uh, 
the analytical list page like I like I was mentioning it. So analytical list page uh, its target is to have both you. You want to have a table view at the same time if you want to toggle and look at the chart form of you. So this should be used only if you have more than 1000 rows of data. If you do not have a use case which does not have 1000 rows of data, then the use case uh, should not be uh, recommended as analytical page. You have to probably use uh, a grid table to use the information and uh, chart information may not be appropriate for any charts to display. There should be minimum amount of data. So without having minimum amount of data, we cannot generate uh, uh, proper visualizations. So general thumb rule for analytical list pages. So analytical list page is uh, independently charts. So if you have wanted to a scenario where you want a uh, complete charts based. Then. So analytical list page. So this uh, they call it as uh, ALP as well short form analytical list page will be used independently. Provided data volume is uh, sufficient enough. Is good enough. So what's the thumb rule is uh, you have 1000 rows of data. OK. You should have 1000 rows of uh, data. So generally then the charts etc visualizing in both tabular as well. So advantages we can visualize in tabular form. As well uh, in. Chart form so we can toggle between both the use cases. OK, so this is how the screenshot looks where you have and these are interaction charts where you can click on uh, the filters. These are just a filters and below you have a chart form as well as tabular form. So that's the advantage of it. And some room of improvement was done with respect to master detail. So master detail has been now rebranded as uh, a flexible layout. So flexible layout is nothing but each individual uh, item. So you have a left hand uh, section and the right hand we have an object section. Both can be viewed parallelly. And individual sections can be now, you know, full screen mode you can actually toggle. Earlier they were not, uh, f you know, you, you had, they were fixed with the left and right hand side where you did not have the full screen uh, layout as such, but um, now it supports full screen as well. So it's more of uh, earlier we used to have work list application. Now instead of work list application, you can use either list report or a flexible layout. So flexible layout itself is a work list application. You have a work list which can be in full screen or automatically it can be flexible enough to transform into a master detail kind of a uh, template as well. More for approving kind of scenarios, etc. We can use where uh, lots of records of uh, products information had to be shown and uh, uh, in detail at the same time parallelly we want to view the uh, status and progress of each of the uh, whether it has been shipped or delivered etc. The product etc. Those can be tracked simultaneously. So both views simultaneously if you want to see this is how if you want to see inside after drilling down you wanted to view the data then a list report can be opted. If you want to see data simultaneously then flexible layout can be used. So these are the uh, changes which happen to the existing uh, layouts. So another one is uh, flexible layout. So these are it's like uh, master detail like uh, detail uh, has been improved. Okay. So master detail has been improved with uh, some little uh, tweaks and here and there. So uh, high level we have these are the four uh, are, are available. So right now what all I discussed was these all are part of theory elements based applications. SAP theory. Elements. Based. And uh, for theory element based there is no UI coding. There is uh, low coding. I won't say no we can have we, we do have coding, but there is low UI coding. This is important thing. And these are nothing but based on uh, smart controls. So earlier uh, we used to they used to call smart controls. Now it has been rebranded as elements and uh, what it generally does is it, it derives all the controls from the metadata. So metadata has all the structure. So if we go and look for is. Uh, I'm going to. Make my service. Just 
a minute. Let me take some answer this. Second, let me double check. So this is a ESV system uh, where you know this is an SAP path <coughs> provided one developer system for us to play around. So okay, there's no authorization. Fine, uh, that's okay. There will be limited authorization. That's the reason. So I can just uh, take uh, and that's fine. So I just wanted to just understand, uh, show you the different structure. So, if, uh, so I have taken example of not in service here where uh, if we look at the metadata structure, so metadata. As we are, uh, if you're familiar, so metadata gives us complete instructions of uh, what are the underlying uh, data types which are used and what are the uh, restrictions, etc. we have enforced. So the max length, etc. So metadata gives us complete picture of the information. If you look at a regular service. So what we have here is we have the entities information. So as like I was mentioning earlier, so entities can be considered as tables where we have a customer table, employees table, order details, etc. So multiple tables here we do have only the basic information. We do not have in detail information of what fields exist in customers and what are the different, uh, you know, data types which are used for specific fields. So if for this case, we use metadata. Metadata gives granular information of uh, what is a key field. What are the different properties? If you look at category field, the key field is uh, category ID. And uh, you do have the properties called uh, category name, description and picture. So each of them have uh, different data types. So this information is sufficient enough uh, to generate for the templates to generate the UI code automatically. So theory elements leverage metadata information to build the complete uh, UI building blocks. So when you are trying to use a metadata, so I'll just show you a simple access how see now by picking up this whole data. Um, we are just I'm just going to show you how it uh, tries to the templates uh, tries to pick up the whole data. So I'm going to. So, so let's see how it generally works. The templates works, etc. Let's understand that. So I'm going to take my fury go and uh, go to my you just have to use command palette then type a uh, fury open application generator then. Oh, so let's understand. How theory elements uh, works. Okay, so we just are trying to understand what is that, uh, you know, how they are actually rendering with the low code approach and uh, what's, you know, behind scenes what's happening. So we are just trying to understand. So be it any template. So uh, there's uh, all the templates uh, follow the same thing. It's just. Uh, so we are just uh, going to see practically. So if you see here, so so far now we are talking about the smart. Uh, controls or smart fear elements. So these all are based on low code approach as well as metadata driven. You can call it as annotations as well as uh, using these users CDS use. So what are you call all the approaches uh, uh, refer to the fury elements approach? So like I was mentioning it. Here they, they do have work list 
but uh, in this template uh, flexible layout is not yet released maybe they would add later so right now still it is a there is a work list one but uh, gradually you'll see a flexible layout being introduced but right now you have list report analytical list page as well as uh, you do have uh, audio page so i think uh, in the visual studio local version they did not introduce yet flexible layout but flexible layout would be added here as well so it is available in uh, bas in the local environment it's not yet available the template it would be uh, available maybe shortly okay but uh, the fury elements part when you use the same templates you will see in the freestyle as well so freestyle worklist application this master detail if you see so master detail uh, has a flexibility so here you'll find freestyle and there is a uf application with a blank template the difference between fury elements and here is you can write your own code and you can write tweak everything in freestyle approach so it is completely ui driven where you write in xml form and yesterday we discussed about mvc where we use any programming approach where our controller etc exists in case of elements application there is no mvc folder at all there is no mvc structure at all it is it has only single folder called annotations and nothing else and it ha within the annotation folder etc also it should have mandatory one metadata so let's see how we can generate an application using list report now here i'm not going to select any odata service i'll just select the metadata so to test our theory that uh, it is metadata driven so how do we test is pick any metadata now i have this metadata service and i'm not going to use any backend data at all so i'll just copy this whole data file file data right i was mentioning that this is a complete instruction file so whether it is it is successfully able to generate the code or not i'm going to do it now in this case it has complete information it says that there is a category this is a key field and the category has a string type it cannot be uh, blank and its max length is 15 so likewise we have multiple fields and all the fields have different different uh, uh, data types de defined so go and take a new tab new notepad and uh, uh, try to uh, paste the metadata information any odata service take the metadata and save it uh, with the name called metadata any name you can give let me save this as metadata okay so metadata or txt i'm just saving it yes face my file yeah here it is so this is my file so i saved it as metadata text uh, text and category this is what we have seen category name now uh, let's see whether uh, how the uh, template uh, tries to pick up now i'm going to use that file so you know load any service uh, and copy the metadata so in this case and uh, try using a template we just have to you know you got to use a uh, fear elements template here as a step So this is a path on the desktop where we have metadata file. So I'll select next. You see it's uh, automatically reading the template. So it is reading all the uh, categories, order, products, supplies, whatever we have defined. So it is, that's the reason uh, now we can call it as metadata driven where it tries to read automatically. If you do not have a metadata st uh, structure, uh, so if you do not have, if the still the application is being built up, if you have the metadata information, etc., then your Fury application can be uh, generated, auto-generated, and later you can connect to the underlying data, etc. So the categories, etc., to show you uh, what all are list are available. So I'm just you can use uh, dollar format to JSON, and uh, you could see 
categories, uh, customers, employees, etc. So we have the same list getting customers, categories, customers, employees, order details, order details, etc. So automatically the template is able to read, etc. Now let's see if he's able to generate the uh, co uh, see how uh, code as well. So it may not uh, display any data, but let's uh, see. You know, we'll trying to understand element uh, based and element app. I'll call it and give an application title as uh, data driven. I'll give a namespace. It's just like uh, application UX dot element app would be our application name. So the namespace is just a package name. You can call it. So. First. Element based app. Okay, so I'm point to projects and then I'll keep everything as yes. Uh, no, that's fine. So deployment. We are not yet uh, looking into deployment aspect. We'll just focusing on the concept. So let's uh, here the important thing is you have uh, noticed the folder structure of uh, Fiery Freestyle. Now we need to notice the folder structure of the, our element based applications. So that is very important. So this is the underlying uh, difference between both the approaches development approaches and what all can be done in element based and what all uh, cannot be done has to be clearly uh, you know we have to define the boundary when to opt. You cannot actually change your uh, development uh, approach the first you decide that you are going to build using freestyle and all, all of a sudden in, in mid of the project you cannot actually try to switch your whole approach to uh, uh, fiery element based so we have to take a call at the beginning of the development itself whether we are going to follow use uh, fiery element based or a freestyle based so i think it's uh, let it install so meanwhile it is installing so i'll just uh, 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 by the time it is installing just I wanted to just show you short uh, uh, Fury 3 as uh, this is how. Let me know if you can see you can just uh, see uh, short. Uh, meanwhile it installs you can just uh, look at. The So this is what the Fury uh, 3 look as such on the launch pad. This is the CI, so a conditional AI which is being brought in. So that was just a short video published by SAP uh, how the Fury 3. So there's not a dramatic change if you are looking from a developer standpoint, but it's a big change from SAP point of view because customers do have uh, lots of uh, SAP products who may be using it. So all products they are trying to provide a single uh, uh, user experience point of view. So for it's it's more of uh, see as for HANA, uh, their Fury was the top layer. Okay. Now not only as for HANA product, but all other products also will be uh, able to leverage SAP Fury platform is a indication we can take away from this particular uh, Fury 3.0 instructions. So that's a, ho a whole summary of it, but uh, uh, let's uh, get back to our application. Hope that is generated. Yes, so this has been generated. So I'll just expand our application here. So if you see the folder structure, uh, between uh, the previous uh, demo application where we have used our folder structure where we had a controller a model and view etc whereas now if you see 
in the folder structure there is only annotations there is more, no there is no view there is no controller uh, sorry there is no uh, model folder as such so all it has is annotation file and if you select the annotation file it has some uh, information called vocabularies so this is what an annotation is uh, called uh, we call it as annotation where it's nothing but instructions so we have a set of uh, instructions uh, which uh, which which actually tries to auto populate the code uh, where you know using a template we can automatically generate the code in the ui so let's understand more about it so if you go into inside the manifest so the manifest like previously i was mentioning it we have three sections called app ui and uh, ui sections so these are the key sections which we have uh, in a manifest file so under the ui section and the ui section if you closely watch so here you do have uh, multiple uh, annotations etc so if you see here there is a section just below the target section if you see there is a section called uh, uh, categories object so using the template what are we selected all those are part of scp.fe.library so these are the templates where they are getting auto map uh, to the metadata. So now categories has been when we selected in the wizard categories. So it is trying to add the instructions in the manifest. So manifest is a single file where our runtime understands how to run the code. Okay, uh, runtime it's bothered only about the manifest file and the component file, and other folders etc are a part of uh, manifest itself. So it derives all the information from um, here. So the instructions etc from the metadata are derived and and placed inside this uh, manifest itself automatically. So when we use annotations also we try to add instructions automatically <clears throat> in, in this section itself. OK, so we have something called uh, guided development. So I'm going to show you uh, a short. Uh, so we are going to do extensive uh, session later, but just to show you uh, the how the approach is. Now any project when you selected it, so we have something called uh, guided development approach. This is a new approach altogether uh, for element based applications. So. This is how we are going to uh, tweak uh, the matter. So now so assume uh, all we are assuming is. The metadata has all the annotations. The annotations. If you know, currently it doesn't have any minimalistic annotations. If you see the annotations, there is no much annotations available in this North Wind service. OK, so. So server side annotations and we have something called local annotations. OK, so what is server side annotations? What is local annotations? If your service has all additional instructions, so whether create operation, update operation or delete operation. So what are operations you have it? So all the instructions etc are already uh, you know available. For our page maybe for generating a charts for a list report maybe generating a table. So the necessary information etc are already using CDS views. If the instructions are. Designed in the back end itself. Fractions are designed in the back end. OK, then all you need to do is using this template from the automatic the, from the service they already read the information and automatically the application will be generated so in the ui you need not write a single line of code okay so there is other approaches so for what if some of the instructions needs to be tweaked so you need to modify some of the instructions which are available in the metadata so in those cases you can use local annotations using guided approach so guided approach uh, is a wizard based approach based uh, one where it allows you to tweak the server side annotations. Now we have we are assuming that Northwind doesn't have, but uh, we do have different services. Are uh, we going to use uh, three services? One first we used. Fear uh, elements. Uh, template right, so any template. And second is we have to use a service modeler. We have some service modeler is uh, one more is an extension. Uh, we have installed if you remember initially we installed one uh, pack of six. OK, so in the out of six uh, service model is one. And we have something called application modeler. Something called application modeler. Extension. And we have something called guided development. Guided development. So we have uh, these three extensions will really helpful for us for while building peer elements. 
So these are meant exclusively for this kind of scenarios. So let's uh, see how uh, they tend to be. OK, so guide development is one which and uh, right now I'm talking about. So I'll talk about service model and application modeler in uh, later as well. So guide development uh, development is not right now. I'm, I'm talking about this one. So. In this case, when I select guide development, I have to select the project which uh, element based projects only element based projects has to be used. Uh, you have to use guide development. It is not meant for freestyle application. OK, I select my element app and this is what the element app name I have given. Now which template I am intended to use? If I am intended to use list report, I have a set of uh, wizard based approach. And if I wanted to use object page uh, like the template which has shared, uh, you can use that. If you are building a work, work analytical uh, list page, then these are the instructions. If you are using a work list page, these are the instructions. And if you have an OVP, so I think there is a section for OVP as well. I think this instruction here, it is not listed, but uh, even which are a type of uh, application we want to modify, etc. Based on that, we have we do have um, wizard based approach. Now I'll just show you a quick. Uh, now we want to add one uh, column to the table, so you can just choose add a new column to the table option, and this will automatically add your annotation library in the locally. So locally we use something called UI dot line item, so we have a detailed class later. Uh, how to use all this, uh, etc. But just for illustration, how the element based apps works, we are trying to understand. So all you need to do is uh, select which entity you want to use. Now, if you see uh, from the metadata, we got all the information as well. So I just have to select. Uh, in this case, I'm selecting category as my entity. And uh, whether we do have any association. So yes, we do have. So from category, we want to, to navigate to products and uh, which property based on category id and uh, ui importance it's low high is you know based on desktop if you are accessing all uh, or uh, mobile so if in the uh, if you are adding more columns then for the desktop you can set uh, which columns has to be viewable in your mobile so this high low medium priority would be de is a defining factor whether that column has to be displayed or not so if you see automatically the annotation uh, specific instructions are getting auto generated if you look at this snippet below so the moment we selected entity etc automatically we we do get automatically the annotations etc so these annotations uh, I, you just have to click on insert snippet and uh, those things would be automatically added if you see on the annotation file earlier it was blank and now automatically the new snippet got added if you could see on annotation.xml automatically the local annotation has been, uh, has been added so if I just uh, try to uh, see now this step is done, so I can just exit this guy. So I'm going to run this application and see whether uh, we could see the new column which we added. So just select preview and I'll select uh, start. OK, <laughs> let me see. Don't be started. OK. Let me run on a sandbox. So if you, the beauty of this is no, Node.js uh, uh, does the job automatically running and etc. So. It makes our life easy of running the applications, etc. locally. So if you can see here, um, we do have uh, this one. I think the name, etc. has to be given. So the template has been generated and uh, we just have to choose the, see already uh, by default it is a but uh, category is it select category ID is selected. So we select a category ID, so it has been coming but I think the label it's not getting shown here but it got auto selected because of the instruction. So we added an instruction called category ID. if you see uh, on the above. 
So if you look at the instruction here, so this is what we added. So we added a category ID uh, as a field. So the selections, etc., got enabled because of the annotations which we added. So technically speaking, when it it loads, it has because we we haven't had any data. So I can run with mock server as well. Then it should automatically generate as well. So let me see if we can run this with mock data so that you can visualize the data. So we have multiple run options and the same place. If you look at the preview application, we do have a uh, start with mock data. So if you see here the last option, the difference between all these run uh, run configurations is the first one with sandbox, it will try to run the second one without sandbox. So no FLP. The third one, so for right, any unit testing, so we use Q units and uh, for one page acceptance, you use OPA 5. So for running unit tests, etc., we use a th uh, third one generally. So for the last one is we have do have something called mock server. It is like random data would be generated based on metadata itself once again. So we can visualize some data as we haven't. We used just a simple uh, notepad file in our case uh, as a metadata. So we can use mock data to simulate some data for us. Let's see if it uh, populates some random data. Let me see if I can have to select some field. OK. There seems to be no data at all. It's not able to generate any data. Let me see there seems to be. OK. Communication error starts with index zero length zero communication error. OK, OK. It's depending. OK, it's a. Uh, OK, it's trying to look for connecting to the system, etc. And uh, though the code has been generated for so data generation, at least uh, maybe it's uh, still not able to get to it. Fail to get the context for here goes your service carry with index zero and length zero. OK, I think it's uh, with the north wind service, so it's uh, not able to auto generate the. Auto generate the what we call the local data, but that's perfectly fine. So the template etc will will anyhow we use extensive approach, but our goal is this is how the metadata driven uh, approach uh, works behind the scenes. So though we are uh, we do not have, but if you see the selection etc, this uh, selection of category ID has been attained only because we have added local annotation out there. So guide development allows us to add all the uh, columns etc. So the approach out here is any template you select. If you have uh, server side annotations, your code would be auto generated. And if you at all how to tweak it, you have to use guided development approach and uh, adding a column, adding a new filter, adding a rating indicator. So you can add charts, etc. And uh, you can uh, do all the activities which are listed out here. So each of these activities will have uh, different different steps. So we'll do this activities in our uh, subsequent classes, but the whole overall approach is uh, annotations are metadata driven. That's the whole idea behind this approach. So. Mint based apps. So this is a, a summary of our understanding of this con uh, element based application. So this is how they work. There is one more uh, aspect to design system. So like I was talking about design system, we do have some guidelines called Fury design guidelines. So design guidelines are a, a thumb, uh, like a yardstick where uh, this enables us to understand how to build the apps right. So if you're building applications, you need some guidance. So whether this has to be built, are we building it right or not? So how do we uh, ensure we are building uh, Fiery application in the right process, etc. is SAP Fiery guidelines. So you can type SAP Fiery uh, guidelines and uh, that would take us to version specific. So if you're using a UFA framework version of 1.70, the guidelines could differ. And if you are using 1.9, that the guidelines could differ because Fury 2 and Fury 3, there could be some change in guidelines. There may, may not be dramatic change, but there will be very minimalistic change. So, but uh, from 1.7 onwards, any of your applications are using, then they do have Fury 3 features. 
let me quickly show you how to identify. Now if you're in a GUI system, so you need to identify which version your server is running. We know that uh, UFA has 1.9, but does our customer has the Fury 3 capabilities or not? We need to check, right? So go to your uh, any GUI and uh, go to your system and you can look at status. Okay, so here it gives the server uh, information. The server has uh, which database? So in this case, the uh, ES5 system has uh, Sybase. So this is a ES5 system. Uh, this is a web GUI using which I'm logged in. So ESV system has a Sybase uh, database. It is not using HANA database. OK, uh, it is a quite product of uh, so for low cost, etc. They, they, they have used for the demo system Sybase, but uh, which uh, operating system on server it is running. It is running on Windows NT and uh, of course uh, it's using Sybase. So now if you go inside, there's this uh, called SAP system data. So what all SAP system data are available in this particular uh, server? So just click on this detail section. And here you do have two sections called software component and install products. If you go to install products, so this is just like your Windows or Mac where you go to your control panel and look for what all installed apps, etc. So for the server, this is how we check. So if you see there's a SAP Fury FES for S4 HANA 2020 edition. So this is a 2020 edition of uh, SAP Fury FES. So this is an initial shipment pack. So it has everything. Uh, if, you, if it is 2020 edition, it do have some of the Fury 3 features like uh, Billy's theme uh, light. Uh, so Billy's theme is part of Fury 2. Uh, quads and light theme are part of Fury 3 features. So some of the Fury 3 features do have in 2020 edition. Okay, this is a, a front end version and uh, uh, this is a NetWeaver stack version. So NetWeaver uh, NW stands for NetWeaver for ABAP. We do have ABAP stack as well as NetWeaver for uh, EC uh, for Java stack as well. Most of the EC system uh, fall under this network stack itself, uh, but uh, as for HANA system, etc. If you are uh, using it, um, if you are having as for HANA system, then probably it would be coined somewhere this way. SAP Fiery FES for 2020, etc. We do have one more area called uh, stable release. So this is very important one. Uh, as a developer, we should always have this uh, handy. So what is an active version, long term version of UFA and which is a. Um, you know, what what are SAP's uh, directions with respect to it? So as part of Fury design, when we're building the app itself, so we need to see which has long term support, long term support. OK, so how do we understand this? So first we were looking at uh, first step. Uh, look at a server profile. Of customer. Customer landscape. Okay, so how do we check? We log on to your uh, GUI and go to your system and status and uh, look for product uh, section, uh, product tab. Okay, uh, product and software component tab we do have. So, so these two tabs will give us. And second thing to do is you can check this below your. So stable UFI framework. And uh, LTE support. So SAP do give support to every framework. So if you see uh, this is how the current uh, maintenance status of it. So there are like two different uh, tracks here. So you do have uh, the cloud. So this is like cloud cloud you have Fortnite to release. I'm not exactly sure of the uh, release cycle which SAP follows, but uh, I, I assume that it is uh, you know quad, uh, at least fortnightly where every 15 days or every month you generally see any bug fixes etc. Instantly would be updated for your cloud products. But uh, if you are someone your customer is using on premise, those uh, server etc. would be managed by their internal basis team where SAP do release uh, patches, but it is it's ownership of the customer to ensure that they are on the latest version, right? So the version which we are seeing is this is the version. So FES 2020. So FES 2020 for S4 HANA, nothing but it points to 1.84. If you see the version which you have version which we can see is 1.84. So for FES 2020, so for in the ESY system, we can deploy the apps up to version 1.84. So all the features of the framework up to 1.84 can be leveraged under this landscape. So for this FES 2020 for S4 HANA, I can use up to framework features of 1.84. So in the design guidelines also, when I uh, use it, I have to refer to 1.84 up to release only. So that is a basic thumb rule uh, which I just wanted to highlight.
now for two things to do go and check here so this is what you are going to check here so i do uh, go to server profile and i identify that my product is s4hana 2020 and i just went to my uh, which is a release and i could uh, look at that on premise version and i could figure out that yes uh, fes 2020 is the front end version uh, this is a product that is available and uh, i i just make sure that uh, where my sap ui network stack is this is sap network stack sap ui version and if you look at it here it has uh, 7.52 okay so if you go to software components uh, individual components so we do require two components for the gateway development as well as ui so sap underscore ui is the uh, ui framework so this if you see sap underscore ui so this should point to 7.55 and uh, sap underscore gwfnd is the one which is meant for your gateway foundation this is the one which is responsible for uh, you know uh, securely communicating and creating your o data services etc on the on the on premise system so using scgw transaction if at all we have to create then this uh, component is mandatory so these are by default available from 7.4 onwards this is your network stack version so this network stack version is a product so if the stack version is 7.4 and above uh, then uh, you have by default both the components so i just uh, highlight this point so because customers are at various uh, 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 still there are lots of customers in ecc and we just have to identify right so if uh, netweaver stack is uh, 7.4 and above by default uh, sap underscore ui and sap underscore gwfnd so these are the two components two components necessary for building fury apps fury apps right so they will be by default available by default components will be available need not to do anything they will be available if you have a network stack of 7.4 then these two components will be there as default okay unless you remove the uh, your basis team um, uh, tries to remove the add-ons etc but otherwise these components will be shipped by default and if you're someone in s4 hana system then they are mandatory so s4 hana system it's a uh, if you have s4 hana product then it's a default so we do uh, sap is sap fear is default choice so s4 hana product so blindly you will have you would have fury as default so there is nothing to check fury is available but uh, the understanding here is whether whether do we have fury three features so that's the important check we are trying to do so how do you identify whether we have fury 3.4 features 1.7 and upwards and upwards this is ufi version this is not uh, i'll just write it as well so ufi version 1.7 and greater than and upwards do have incremental fury 3.0 features so this is not a fixed set of features where today they have uh, said that all these are fury features no that's not the case fury three uh, three features are ongoing process so all the uh, couple of uh, down the line more new features will be added so i'm i'll discuss what all new features are available right uh, in our subsequent classes so there are like some uh, now like i said the fury 3 design was some was one feature so we have few more so i'll just uh, talk about which are readily available which can we can leverage and a uh, few more things as well now once we understood that fury 1.7 and above are uh, are the one which enables us fury 3 if customer is on 7.4 uh, and uh, if they are not on s4 on a product etc then we can say as sir fury 3.0 features are not available to you we can outright say that because if it isn't there your customer is not using 1.7 and above uh, using those libraries you do not have any fury 3 features what you want to use integration cards no it's not possible they are available only above 1.7 below 1.7 uh, we called as uh, fury 2.0 and 1.38 uh, greater than and upwards it's uh, fury 2.0 and uh, 1.38 and uh, below it's uh, fury 1.0 so this is how a uh, a general uh, 
features you can see is that's how uh, you can consider so less than 1.38 framework version uh, all the features are capped as 1.2 uh, greater 1.3 and up to 1.7 all the features are fiery 2.0 and upward of 1.7 onwards and uh, till uh, what are the new release we get so right now we are at uh, uh, 1.90 but it's uh, evolving right so this is how we identify whether fear the point of features are available or not and then you have to go look at uh, here now currently this has long term support till q4 2023 so till q4 2023 sap provides if there are any issues in the framework uh, if it's nothing is working, we can raise uh, look for the SAP nodes uh, which SAP provides and we can uh, get uh, immediate security fixes, etc. So here they do specify uh, which are the security uh, features, etc. which needs to be they'll highlight very key ones. But if you see SAP UI no longer supports edge edge uh, based uh, uh, browsers with 1.84 and above. So if you're using even edge browser, not only IE, but edge legacy browser, even that is also not supported uh, from here as well. So this is what uh, they try to specify key highlights. So some security fixes, etc. Also, they'll try to release some uh, patches, etc. We have to watch out for these uh, in any serious uh, patches which are necessary for the customer landscape. OK, so which one to opt? If you ask me, if you see 1.71 1 has a long term support till 2028 Q4 2028. So if your customer is today, if he's trying to build it, he has to have minimum of FES 6.0 and uh, he should be minimum running on 7.4 and he should be staying in. Ideally, he should be in this particular version. Minimum 1.7 with uh, ensures you have longer support cycle. Any app will be sustainable till 2027. And this is a base minimum requirement. If any customer is running on 1.6 with it, its support is ending in Q4 2021. That means just uh, end of this year. So they have to make sure before December they have to upgrade their uh, servers to 1.71. So customers do neglect until SAP officially stops the support. So everybody will be in a rush uh, to upgrade their uh, environments at the last moment. But if you could see Fiery 1.0, the 1.3 still has a long term support till 2.27. But you do compromise on the features and the set of controls which you can use. 1.38 has very minimum bare bone of uh, features and uh, you cannot actually use more features. If your customer is fine with simple templates, etc., then you can very well use 1.3. Still, that has a long term support till 2027. But recommended version if you are as a, as a developer what you have to recommend is minimum we got to have 1.7 for packing up more features okay this is uh, recommended minimum recommended OK, so now we understood which version to use for Fiery 3 and uh, which is has long term support. So 1.7 has long term support. Obviously, we should build our target or application to build for 1.7 and any incremental features look for only for the minimum support. Main. So after 1.71, it's recommended to go for 1.84 and not for 1.9, 1.9, 1.87. These all are like short release cycles where uh, this is meant for only for cloud and not for on premise in on premise version you have these are only cloud only these are our cloud only release so it's right now 1.84 is the ideal one for on premise environment where you have at least for the minimum support of 2023 so if you are at 1.84 it's good enough if you are at 1.7 uh, it's decent enough if 1.6 it will work but you are it's time to upgrade now i'll come to my guidelines and I'll go to look for the three tags tracks here. So if you see these two are for native uh, applications for iOS platform for Android uh, platform. What are the best uh, practices to follow while building applications and Conor UX? It's evolving. It's for the uh, the copilot has been rebranded now as a conversational UX where uh, see th there is no SDK right now where developers can tweak. Right now only SAP is shipping the uh, conversational UI features and only certain applications are currently you know having those capabilities, but it is evolving. So this stream is evolving, but these three are matured enough. So today we are going to talk about uh, SAP Fury and I'll just go inside. And 
the templates etc where we have talked about the same thing so there is um, here uh, how do we use this i'll just try to uh, uh, specify it so here you 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 can uh, select on the top or if you have a specific control in mind you can directly search for as well so first we need to choose the version which we are targeting best guidelines so when i search for it so i think it has to load it's taking a while to load so on the left side corner if you see you have something called uh, fairy design system okay so you have something called layouts and floor plans and you have ui elements so you have elements framework. So what all has to be done with elements framework, etc. You can go and check here. OK, so if you see here for the elements framework, we do have the version. So you do have to select for element specific one. So what are the best practices? So you do select the version which you are. So in this case, I'm assuming we are on 1.7 and the minimum uh, recommended version. And I'm going to look for the guidelines for 1.7 only. So this is the guidelines for uh, this is updated last update on uh, Feb 2020 and these are guidelines. So if you see a uh, fair elements were formally called as smart templates. That's what uh, it talks about. But if you scroll down below, these are the templates which are or you page list report. So here clearly they articulate when to use which uh, floor plan. So we should not uh, looking at uh, uh, OK, we need a chart so we should use it. No, that's not how we decide which uh, uh, template to use. Uh, here usage guidelines are clearly articulated when to use what and what are the benefits out of it. So if you look at here. So here the generic example they have created. So new sales order creating a sales order list report kind of application. So you're unable to approve etc. So then uh, or you page etc. So approving request etc can be automatically shown at the or you page. So here there is a specific template. If you go there will be more detail like explanation. Now I'll just go to. Uh, analytical list page as an example. Um, so once you can uh, go in detail for respect to guidelines as well. So here for analytical list page when to use etc. We do have usage and actually then when to use when to not to use this section is very important. So if drill down is rarely used not used at all or only needed after navigate to another page. So rather than as free or flexible uh, pages so in this case list report might be sufficient. So if you are not actually doing any drill down activity and uh, you are not navigating to any other page also, then they are it's uh, they are recommended to go with list report. You need not to go for uh, this kind of a chart. So if a user needs different charts, etc., but uh, doesn't actually work with the visualization. So if they are not actually dr uh, drilling down from the chart, etc., then they don't need to use uh, this. They can use a simple freestyle application and one chart. If one chart alone is what they are looking at. If they are interacting with the chart, then you have to come with analytical list report. So we do have a certain uh, uh, thumb rule of guidelines. So if you see here some more section. I just wanted to show you one significant difference out here. There are lots of details, finer details, but uh, one important key difference. Let me show you. So this is how you have this one with both uh, chart view as well as table view. Both are simultaneously you are able to view. So if this is not the requirement <clears throat> and if you are interacting, so above charts are interactive charts. So if you click on it interactive, the data will be modifying. If there is an interaction is not your choice, then you need not to go for this particular uh, template itself. They say you have you can use just simple list report where you can show the data in uh, tabular form. Fine, I think I'll stop the class for today. So this is where you'll find the best practice, etc. So there is some more important points uh, in this area, which I, I'll just uh, continue in tomorrow's class and then we'll move on to the next topic. So today we understood what are the approaches we have and how fear elements differ from three um, cell approach differs from fear elements based application. So fear elements are metadata driven. They do not need any extensive UI logic. They are completely server uh, uh, server based annotations driven and annotation can be tweaked using uh, guided development uh, tools and uh, we do have four different uh, smart templates 
those templates uh, has to be used in different different purposes so when to use what we understood and we we do understood how what framework uh, version we have to opt right now so the stable version which we have to opt and how do we look for the customer landscape whether fiery 3 has been uh, features has been available to the customer or not and uh, these are a, a quick summary of what we have done i think uh, if you have any questions you we can discuss else we'll meet in tomorrow's class it's okay okay great uh, so we'll catch up tomorrow so we'll continue the session tomorrow so we'll discuss some more uh, topics and we'll try to do some more exercises and uh, i think we're <laughs> uh, good for today